Greetings, my name is Monty Martin. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin. And, and we, we are, are the Dungeon, Dungeon Dudes. Dudes. Welcome to our channel where we cover everything D&D, including advice for players and guides for GMs. We upload new videos on Tuesdays and Thursdays, so please subscribe to our channel, like this video, and ring that bell so that you never miss an episode. Rogues are infamous for mastering many different tricks of the trade, and a cunning rogue needs a couple extra tricks up their sleeve and can achieve that through multiclassing. Today we are tier ranking the rogue multi-class combinations in D&D 5e. We're going to take a look at how the rogue pairs with all of the other classes in the game and decide whether or not it's a good combination, a not so good combination, or somewhere in the middle. At the end of the video we're also going to look at our community rankings where the community chose their top three favorite combinations for classes with the rogue. Before we get into this week's episode, we just wanted to take a moment to talk about our sponsor for this episode. You may not know this about me, but actually all of my great dungeon mastering power is stored in my beard. In order to maintain our expertise in D&D and perform at the table, we need to keep our beards clean and fresh. And well oiled. Enter this week's sponsor, Beard Sorcery, with their latest beard oil, the Mighty Owlbear, which I have been using to empower my beard with the ferocious essence of the mythical creature itself. Beard Sorcery's Mighty Owlbear beard oil is officially licensed by Dungeons and & Dragons and available now. Both invigorating and fierce, this woody blend will help clear your mind and help you focus. Beard Sorcery makes incredible beard oil products, including the Mighty Owl Bear, which is really great for helping clean and maintain a beard, reducing dandruff or scratchiness, and just keeping it invigorated. Beard Sorcery has come out with a line of beard oils from the Storm Warden, the Mighty Owl Bear, and what have you got there, Kelly? I got the Dark Sorcerer, which is what I'm using currently. I find that using beard oil gets much better results than shampoo shampooing or conditioning my beard because the skin on your face is actually quite different from the skin on the top of your head. So if you want to grab a bottle of Mighty Owl Bear or any of the other beard oil accessories that Beard Sorcery makes, you can follow the links in the description below to get your hands on them. And now on to this week's episode. We shot a video a while ago that explains our overall metrics for how we rank our multi-class combinations. You can check that video up right up over here. Generally speaking, what we're looking for are combinations that excel almost no matter which subclass you pick or what combinations you're, you're creating. The ones that are better than the sum of their parts. If the ones that we're going to rank lower are the ones where maybe there are a, one or two options for a viable build, but you have to actually work quite a bit to make them, work, to make them actually viable on the table. Yeah. Whether it's ability score combinations, the way the attributes line up, we generally tend to favor specialized characters rather than characters with a lot of versatility, but we have our biases and everyone else does too. So for that reason, we do ask our community what they thought and how they rank the different combinations that are possible. We'll be talking about our community rankings at the end of the episode, but overall we do try to evaluate how the, these characters play out in combat, exploration, and social interaction, and rogues are good at all three of those things. And so it is worth at looking at how the multi-class combination augments all those pillars. I will also say that Monty and I do have our own biases. A lot of this is from our experiences at the game, which is why we polled our audience to see what their favorites were. And if you disagree with us, that's okay. Tell us about it in the comments below. So kicking things off, the Artificer Rogue, to me, feels like a very natural fit. Rogues benefit a lot from having intelligence-based skills, Artificers like to build and tinker with things, and the, it immediately gives me the trapsmith sort of vibe. Someone that's gonna be using a crossbow or ranged weapons, gonna be setting up traps, setting up ambushes, and really being this inventive explorer type character. I actually think that this is a very unique and interesting archetype, and what I like about it is, although the artificer isn't necessarily seen as the biggest skill user, they do have the access to a ton of tools, which I think, although not doubling down on what the rogue offers, it complements it very well. Combined with the rogue's expertise, and I think that the artificer gets some cool infusions, especially if you want to go the crossbow route because they get the reloading crossbow, they do get some things to support skills as well. They will have some spells that will support your skill use as well. Most prominently, and this is going to be something that we bring up again and again for many different classes, 
Artificers have Guidance, and you can cast Guidance on yourself to give yourself an extra d4 when you're using a skill. So I like to think about this with the Artificer Rogue. This is the Artificer pulling down the goggles, tightening the lenses, pulling up the elbow grease. The Rogue is getting ready to, to do something. It's like, stand back, everyone. Here we go. I, I immediately think this this archetype actually fits into so many spy movies that we love. Yes. I'm a big fan of the Mission Impossible series. My favorite character in the more recent ones is Simon Pegg, who builds all of the gadgets for their heists. Yeah. And to be both... I think that if you're in on a heist, most people need to be roguish in some capacity. Is this the most Batman archetype that you can get? Oh, the Artificer Rogue. I mean, there is part of me that wants to give a monk levels with Shadow Monk because yeah. I actually think you can you can get a lot of Batman out of Shadow Monk because let's be honest, he beats people up with his fists. I think this is the very gadget heavy iteration of Batman. Yeah. Yeah. The the investigator gadgets. Yes. And by being the armorer, you can build your stealth suit. Yeah, and I think that is the ticket to make this a viable option, is the armorer offers the one suit that is the infiltrator suit, which is going to give us advantage on stealth checks. It is going to have a ranged attack associated with it. Which means we can sneak attack with those lightning gauntlets. Expertise and advantage on stealth is, is like... Yeah, I don't think you need to take too many levels of Artificer either to make this work. No. Now, the one drawback here is the armor Artificer, great. The theme and flavor of the Artificer Rogue, yeah. great. But do we get anything? Maybe you could take Battlesmith, but I don't think we're going to take Artillerist. I don't think we're going to take you Alchemist. Flank with your companion. For yeah. sneak attack, if you're a Battlesmith. So, okay, maybe you have a robot pet. That's kind of cool. Uh, so that's half of the artificers are viable, which I guess is. And okay. maybe with this character, you could you don't you can have a small investment in dexterity, and you can invest heavily in intelligence. Your rogue subclass could be arcane trickster or mastermind. Yeah. I think that there's a couple different choices here. And enough I think, to raise it. I, I was thinking C, but do you think it's enough to raise it? Well, here's what I'm going to come back to, to, to saying. We've talked about before how the Artificer and the Ranger are actually very similar classes. Once you start breaking them down, they're both half casters. They both have a lot of skill utility based use. They both can have pets. Ranger Rogue is very good. We're going to talk about that one later. I don't know if this is as good as Ranger Rogue, but it's 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 if you look at it on paper, there's a lot of potential here. I'll give it a B. I'm very tempted to give it an A. I think there are some builds, but I don't think at any point we are taking away from our uh, sneak attack dies by taking levels of uh, artificer. But you would be doing the same if you were a ranger. And you can get extra attack. You you can give it an A. I feel like I'm I'm on a B. And you could still use a crossbow and use sharpshooter. Yeah. And I mean, you do get the, the repeating shot infusion. Yeah. And you could do other things yeah. that confuse your armor for better protection. Yeah. Uh, do artificers get shields? No. They do? They do. Yeah. Uh, we but like... I, I think you're doing a ranged attacker here. Yeah. And you've got steady aim. I think you got something here. I think that I, I'm sticking with a B. I'm sticking with an A. I All think right. it's really good. All I right. think it's. I think that there's a lot of potential here. What about the barbarian? So the first complication with the barbarian is immediately off the table. The the two things that you want to make work with this build are reckless attack, granting you advantage advantage on a weapon attack. Thus, that's the advantage that you need to sneak attack. The problem, reckless attack says you have to be using strength for the attack roll. And sneak attack says you have to be using a finesse weapon or a ranged weapon. So sneak attacking with a greatsword is not on the table. But I've talked about the barbarian build before where you are dual wielding. Yes. So you could take two short swords. You could yeah. take two rapiers. 
Uh, the only reason why I'm not is because I think it looks silly in my mind. Yeah, I, I don't... and you you got to take dual wielder to dual wield rapiers. No, but a short sword could be a gladius, and you can wield a shield because barbarians get that. And there's two things that are immediately starting to come out here: Conan, gladiator, pit fighter vibes. Actually, yeah, absolutely. If you throw a buckler and a short sword in there, yep. you're the gladiator pit fighter. But also... Put on that, like, domed helmet with the... But then you yeah. don't, like, a lot of gladiators, uh, like, in the movie Gladiator, he's, like, shirtless for some reason. And, hey, like, you're still going to be on armored defense with the barbarian. Yeah. Right? Have a cool helmet. That doesn't yeah. count as armor. Uh, but then also, okay, going back to Conan, I do want to point out here that, that Conan... As much as he is the typical barbarian, we all think of Conan the Barbarian. He's literally called yeah, Conan cool. the Barbarian. But in all of his stories, he's as much a thief as he is a barbarian. Yeah, yeah. and I think that you really realize that. So, like, yeah, Conan, pit fighter, gladiator vibes. So, we could go all the way to Barbarian 5 for extra attack. We get the fast movement, which combines, interestingly, with... Cunning, Cunning action. action. Yep, yep. We still have to enter a rage as a bonus action, but that's fine. Um, we can sneak attack while we're raging. So if we're Rogue 5, Barbarian 5, we're fighting with the Gladius and the shield. We stab someone. We get an extra 3d6 damage. We got advantage on all the attacks. I want to point something else out. Okay. So you've, you've thrown on a shield here. That's plus yeah. 2 to our AC. So we're actually going to have a better AC. But also, as a rogue, we have evasion, and we have uncanny dodge. Yep. As a barbarian, when we're raging, we're taking half damage. Okay. If we take a few levels of barbarian to decide to get bear totem, uh, we're mitigating a ton of damage. We have okay AC. I, I like the idea of slapping a shield on, on this character to up that AC a little bit more, but I, I think that we got something that, like, doesn't really mind getting hit. What rogue subclass are we actually taking with this character? I think thief could be really cool. I mean, that's classic. Yeah. Assassin might be cool. Swashbuckler actually feels yeah. like the gladiator. It does, but you actually don't need the swashbuckler's feature because your reckless attack is going to cue off your sneak attack so easily. True. Right? Uh, soul knife. Mm, yeah, arcane trickster's kind of off the table because we spell casting. We could just be a scout. Scout, scout does work. Yeah, I, I do think that there are a few options here. No, there, there, there absolutely are. I think that for barbarian, it doesn't really matter. You pick your favorite, but is and... this gonna give us more damage than we would be? Like, if we were ten levels of rogue, we have a five d six sneak attack with a short sword. We're not getting advantage, but we could still dual wield with a dagger. Here's, here's what I think you're doing. You're giving up a bit of damage for way more resilience. Yes, you're getting a lot of resilience out of this. I believe that there's a powerful build here. I think that there's a couple. Is this an A? I think it's an A. This character doesn't feel like a barbarian or... A rogue. It feels it's like... It's very unique. Because you're building a strength-based... Yeah. This is a character that, from the outset of the campaign, you have decided that you are playing the barbarian yeah. rogue. You're just putting in the minimum you need in dexterity to make the multi-classing requirement, and you're going to go on armored probably, so that's going to help your AC a little. This is the character I might bring to the table if I was playing... Like, I would take the gladiator background, mm -hmm. and I would, I would be that, like, hero... Who like breaks free from the gladiator ring, sneaks yeah, out. Yeah. Yep. Like it's a very specific character we're making that doesn't feel like either. And I don't know if it's better than a full barbarian or better than a full rogue. It's a hundred percent playable. Yeah. I don't know if it's the most optimized combination in the world, but it's totally playable. It sounds a lot of fun. I'm confident giving it a B. Yeah. You know, I'm thinking of some of the other options out there. And yeah, th this is a really fun, unique play style. Yeah. It might not be the most powerful. So I was I was, I was, was getting like, excited. Because with the to Artificer, we can go a range route where we grab Sharpshooter and it really kicks things up a notch. Like in the damage department. I mean, I, I, I gave Artificer a B. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll give this a B. I think that they're okay. on par with fun levels. Okay. Moving along to the Bard. We are now multiclassing to a spellcaster, so we'll need Dexterity 13 and Charisma 13. 
And I think that the biggest thing with this build is that we're always going to be juggling those two attributes. But there's so many combinations that leap out of the page. We can be a straight up, I think that the Swashbuckler Swords Bard is a beautiful match. Yeah. Uh, the Whisper's Assassin also stands out to me. Whisper's Soul Knife. Whisper's Soul Knife. Lore Bard combined with Mastermind. Mastermind. Yeah. 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 I think that you could also do um, an Eloquence Investigator. What are we getting? Well, Sneak Attack with Bard levels is great. We're going to add spell casting. So you could be we're an playing a gishy. Trickster. We're playing a Gishy character. It is yeah. a very Gishy character. Uh, spell Sword, whatever you want to call it. Um, I... I think that you're you're finding an interesting way to make the spell sword work because, yeah, there's things like Swords Bard and Whispers Bard that will allow you to double down on combat prowess. But then you're also adding some really unique spell casting. The thing I like about the Bard, their spell casting involves a lot of like trickery and deception type spells. And you know what else we got? Expertise everywhere. The skills on this character are off the chain. Yes. You have expertise from both sources. You have jack of all trades, but you're also a lot of skills. A lot of skills going on here. Yep. A lot of proficiencies. And I, the spells to back it up because you're going to have spells like fairy fire to support you in combat, but you've got charm person. You've got invisibility. You've got enhance ability. You've got suggestion. You will really be able to be a social manipulator par like. I, I, I want to also say that, like, for some, for reasons that I probably can't explain, but, but just for reasons, the Bard has always felt like the rogue of spellcasters. Yeah. If that makes sense. It, I think it's worth noting. I don't think the Bard rogue is necessarily any better at manipulation and social interaction than a straight up Bard. Yes, but if, right now we're in the rogue video, so adding Bard to the rogue makes the rogue a better manipulator. Yes, it, it makes the rogue a better manipulator for sure. Immediately, you could have gotten those just by being an arcane trickster. Like, you can get invisibility, suggestion, charm person. Yeah, but I could be an eloquence Bard and talk my be the face of the party. Eloquence swashbuckler. If you're an eloquence swashbuckler, you're the spy who talk, who like dresses in the suit to attend the party, talks their way in, gathers intel, kills their target. Mm -hmm. Like it's again, there's an archetype there. Yeah, and the psychic, and if we're going with the whispers bard, the psychic blades ability is going to compensate for the loss of sneak attack dice by multiclassing. I think that if you're a swords bard, swashbuckler. The main thing, though, that you're going to want to do, and this is this is kind of, again, the, the difficulty of the combo, is that you're going to want to take, like, five or six levels of Bard. Yeah. Because you want, as a Swords Bard, you want to get the extra attack. You get the fighting style, too. But you want those Bardic Inspiration dice coming back on the short rests. You know, okay, this feels like a really powerful build, but I think because we want six levels... You don't have to, but because that's kind of what we want, I feel like that's an investment. It is. And it, that makes it harder to do. And not only is it an investment, I think you, there's tons of different options, but I do think you have to think carefully about what you want the character to be. Because if you're going to try to be the dualist, social manipulator, trickster, everything all at once, you might end up a... Like, you're going to be good at all of those things. But I think that it's you're already putting a ton of versatility on the table. So what you're risking with this character is being a mile wide, but an inch deep. Jack of all trades, master of none. Yes. Now, you are actually going to be master of quite a few. But you, I think it behooves you to think really carefully about, do I want the character to be the good melee fighter gish? Or do I actually just want to focus on skills and spells, right? It's like skills, spells, swords, pick two, and then accept that the third one is going to be good, but probably not as good as if you had gone single classed. Does that make it an A or does that sink it to a B? This is borderline S. Okay. I think it's, I think the biggest thing that holds it back 
is the fact that the Bard 6 Rogue 6 has all these amazing abilities, but it's a 12th level character. I, I, I'm, I accept an A. Yeah. Now we move on to the Cleric. Yeah. When I first looked at the Cleric, you have the religious holy cleric and the sneaky deceptive rogue and i was like these two don't mix but in so many movies we have that archetype of the roguish character who has like the 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 medallions to the gods or like the the super yeah superstitious... all their lucky charms and yeah, and yeah they, they they believe like weird things about the world of the universe or they believe that you know someone's watching them up above and helping them all through it it is actually a fun archetype to imagine the the religious rogue because what you end up with is a character who is maybe sneaky and vile by nature but believes that somehow like i i love that that i feel like in a lot of movies this person is irish <laughs> <laughs> i don't know why fair but 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 yeah it's kind of like that irish rogue that that's just got a that interesting religious perspective hence the lucky charms yes and the superstitions and everything like that now yeah. What's beautiful about this combination as well is I don't think we need to go very far. I think that we can just dip our toes into the religion. We're we're a rogue first. Yeah. And we pray to the gods when we're in danger. Yeah. Other than that, we're stealing. Yeah. So one level. Yep. And easy to grab wisdom 13. Rogue doesn't mind having a wisdom of 13 at all. And with one level, we get a lot. We get shield proficiency. We got guidance. Yeah. Talked about how good that was before. We could bring along Bless and Healing Word if we want to, uh, just for a pinch. And with one level of Cleric, we can grab a domain and get some choice features from it. As a raw power example, one level of Twilight Cleric gives you advantage on initiative and 300 foot Dark Vision. Dark Vision ain't bad on a rogue. Especially if you need it from, you didn't get it from your ancestry. I also immediately think of the Knowledge Domain Cleric because Knowledge Domain Cleric gives us an ability to boost up some skills. It gives us expertise in, in two skills from, from that list. From the Knowledge List, from the right? Knowledge so it's list. not necessarily anything, but hey. It's, it's two more expertise. Yeah, but one more level of Knowledge Cleric gives you the Channel Divinity which you can use to grab proficiency in any skill or tool for 10 minutes. And I think that actually fits a rogue really well because rogues already have so many proficiencies, but the fact that you can be like, oh, we need a document forged? Give me a minute. Yep, just do it. We need yep. a disguise? Give me a minute. Like the, the that it, it almost similar to the way that the artificer has that ability to yeah. to to gain every any tool. Uh, this the knowledge domain cleric allows the rogue to kind of dip their toes into to all tools. Uh, I also think of the trickery domain cleric. That that just feels like it's got to fit. The channel divinity power is really good for a rogue because the invoke duplicity is letting you summon a duplicate of yourself that can give you advantage on attack rolls if you're adjacent to the target with you. So it's it, it's just an ability. It's like, oh, I, I need help sneak attacking? Bam, here's my duplicate. Okay, I immediately think of Loki... If he was a rogue, totally. You have Loki. Yes. Loki is notorious for the deceptive version of Loki. Yeah, that's his like number one play. And then he'll be talking to you. Then all of a sudden, real Loki comes out from the side and stabs you. Uh, so if you want to play the more combat Loki, Loki's generally for me a spellcaster. But there's every once in a while that he jumps in there with a knife. Yep. And so if you want to use the duplicity. To, to play that Loki game. I, I think I think that's really fun. Okay. Is it worth doing more than a dip? What if you took like five or six levels of Cleric and are mm. now at the point where you've got... The domain spells could be interesting. They could. They could be. You, I, could, you, can you, you can't sneak attack with spiritual weapon. I don't... And I don't want spirit guardians unless I, I guess mean, I'm a melee rogue, but... I, I mean, what else are you going to concentrate on? Killing people. I know that that's... Yeah, I know what you're saying. Right? I, I, I get it. I don't think it's... Okay, we have talked about the rogue does kind of drop off at higher levels. There's some neat abilities, but I feel like you're waiting a long time for like one or two spread out amongst your like four higher level abilities. The dip excites me more. It does. I don't think that at higher levels you would 
do badly from taking more levels of cleric. I'm feeling like the higher we go, the more into B territory we are. Like 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 if mm -hmm. we're like six levels cleric, we're a B multi class. Yeah. But if we're dip, we're an A plus multi class. Yeah. I'm I, I'm fine with that. Uh, so I'm landing on an A. Okay. Now if we flip to the opposite side of the wisdom coin, we have the cleric on one. And now we have the Druid on the yeah. other. The Druid has similarities to the Cleric. We have a support caster. However, there are some differences. But we do get Guidance. We do get Shields. We do have Healing Word. Healing here. Word. We got Fairy Fire. Yeah, we so like that. So there's a way for us to get advantage. Uh, Entangle can be cool. Yeah. So even just a couple first level Druid spells are going to be interesting. But I feel like we want a little bit more than this... I want to throw it back to a video we did a while ago where we were ranking all of the classes based on the pillars of play. And to many people's surprise, when we came to the Infiltrator, the rogue didn't win. The druid with wild shape was the winner. The druid was the winner. So I want to paint you a picture, Monty. Okay. I'm, I've taken two levels of druid. Okay. I'm an assassin or whatever rogue Taking a bunch of rogue levels. A bunch of rogue levels. Yeah. Okay. I gotta infiltrate the castle and kill the king. The king is in his bedchambers. Okay. A lot of guards between me and that king. I turn into a rat. It's it's an old castle. There's yep. rats around. Yep. The guards you, are used to seeing rats running around. And you can still use your expertise in stealth. And can you just use expertise in deception to like, if the guard sees you, be like, I'm just a rat. I'm just a rat. I'm a cute rat. You don't want to step on me. Yeah. Um, okay. So now, okay, okay. Well, if we all, if we took three levels of druid, okay, pass without trace, we're now a virtually impossible to see rat. If somebody does see us, we're just a rat in the castle. So if you were, this character could be level six, plus three proficiency bonus. If you're level six and you have a sixteen dexterity. That's plus nine to stealth. With pass without trace. Plus 19. <laughs> At level six. At level six, we have a plus 19 to stealth. We're a rat. We get all the way to the bedchamber of the king. He's asleep. We turn into the assassin, slit his throat, turn back into a rat, leave the castle. Can you sneak attack with your rat bite? If the DM will allow it, then I don't even need to turn into the assassin. I think it... Yeah, because then you could just... Yeah. Go yeah. for the jugular as the assassin rat. I love assassin rat. Assassin rat makes this, okay, like, I. the more I think about it, like, at first I was like, okay, wild shape, we're not really using it in combat. We can't sneak attack necessarily unless the DM but agrees. But the infiltration is so good. This, this actually ups your infiltration game. And what rogue doesn't want that? This is a textbook example of being better than the sum of its parts. Because as a druid, when you wild shape, you might not have the great stealth proficiency ability innately. But we're going to have expertise. Yes. And as the rogue, again, you have that great innate stealth, but that little bit of extra magic. And I think what really takes this overboard is like, as an arcane trickster, we could be invisible. We can mm -hmm. cast invisibility on ourselves. The bard could do that too. But it's that combination of being the innocuous critter with Pass Without Trace, with like what you can stack up is so much more here. Do you get to keep your stealth score when you wild shape? You so when you wild shape, if your ability bonus and a skill is better than that of the animal that you're wild shaped into, you keep your own bonus. And as a rogue, we're better in a lot of skills. And you keep your proficiencies, yeah. So you're actually up... So and your other class features. So you can cunning action while you are in rat form. So you're a super speedy rat. You can hide as a bonus action. Yes. You can yep. dash as a bonus yep. action. Yep. Uh, and not only that, but technically what's happening here is the rogue makes your wild shape better and the druid makes your infiltration better. It's really good. You are an incredible assassin. Yeah. Is 
Is this S? That specific... Okay, so the three, two or three levels of Druid, plus whatever you want to do with Rogue, is really good. The... I really have a hard time... How is this not... A, you're right. How is this not S tier? I also like... Okay, Moon Druid gives us the, the ability to wild shape to a challenge rating one creature, which might be cool, and you might want to look at that, but you don't need that. Assassin Wolf? You could... Assassin Bear? <laughs> Raw. What uh, if you were a koala? Drop Bear? You could be a Drop Bear. Yeah, you could be a Drop Bear. Now, but there are other Druid options. You're taking two levels, maybe three. I think, like... There might be something here with the wildfire or the spores or the stars. Um, I think there's some fun, fun options here. But really, you're here for the wild shape infiltration, I, it, it, the shield. It looms so large. And, and really, it does come down to that question is, is your DM going to let you sneak attack with a natural weapon? Even if he's not, I like the idea of a rat crawling into the king's bedroom, turning into the, the, yeah. the hooded figure who slits the throat, and then as the guards are running in, a rat just crawls but through I their feet and escapes. But I just also love like, yeah! <laughs> well, okay, yes, that's comedy You could gold. be a bunny. Yes, you could be a bunny. We're on Monty <laughs> Python again. Uh, <laughs> You murder all of the paladins as a bunny. Yeah. Uh, nobody suspects that they have to use a holy hand grenade to try to, <laughs> to try to get rid of you. Is it S? I'm giving it an S tier. Okay. You know, I'm going to... It just sounds so fun. I want to play this character. Yeah, I do too. Next up, we come to the fighter. Now, this is wildly different than something like the bard, the cleric, or the druid. We're taking a dip into fighter, and I think... It's amazing, no matter what. Action Surge, Second Wind, Extra Attack, Battle Master Maneuvers, Combine Eldritch Knight with Arcane Trickster. There's a lot of build options. Here's what I would say. The Druid gave us the S tier for Infiltration. The Fighter has nothing to offer as far as augmenting our skills or our infiltration or exploration abilities. It simply says, do you want to fight better as a rogue? And the answer is yes. Yeah. So if we're in the infiltration campaign, if we're yeah. if we're a spy syndicate, the druid rogue is more interesting. If we're in a combat heavy campaign, the fighter, whether you're taking two levels, three levels, or five, five levels, yep. Those are kind of your, your ends. You're either taking two levels, Action Surge and Second Wind. Yep. Great. You're taking three levels. You pick up Battle Master or you pick up really any. Uh, you can most. be a Samurai. Samurai. Samurai just have that ability that just, I want advantage this turn as a bonus action. And if you're doing yep. that, then you know you're getting your sneak attack. Yep. Um, and that's actually better than Steady Aim. For melee. In yes. particular, right? Um, you could be a soul knife psi warrior? I don't know. That could be cool. Maybe. Can you sneak... Can your, If you're an echo knight, can your echo give you what you... Can it be like invoke duplicity uh, for... Maybe? For sneak attack? I think that's a DM ruling situation. Could you... Okay, I just think the champion assassin build is, is a pretty strong it's, it's option. It's pretty solid. I... Th there's a lot of build options here. I think the other cool thing is this works really well whether you are going with rapier and shield, dual wielding, and it also works really well as just a straight up crossbow expert fighter. Like Arcane it, Archer might be viable. You anything could be viable here, and that's why it is bare minimum A tier. I think I, it's another S, but it's a different S. It is a very different S from the from the Druid. Again, yeah. these are S tier based on the campaign you're playing in. The fighter's going to excel in in combat. Same way that for infiltration, the Druid and the Rogue are both fill, filling that gap in a really insane way. And I, I think I think the other reason why it's S tier is, as I'm saying that, I'm like, but then... The fighter's not giving us a perfectly rounded character, but no character is perfectly rounded. No. The rogue is good at infiltration. You're not losing anything by gaining fighter levels. So we're just gaining better combat. We are. It's coming at the price of our sneak attack. 
Yeah, but we're getting two attacks. We're getting action surge. Yes, and I, I think that extra attack... Extra attack, again, if you're attacking twice with a weapon that does 1d6 damage, plus your ability score modifier, plus you're getting a fighting style out of it, plus you're getting battle master maneuvers, it definitely more than makes up for, even if you're going all the five levels of fighter, it makes up for the lost sneak attack dice. Yeah, I mean, if, I I, it, if, if I'm an does. archer with the archery fighting style... Yeah. Uh, I'm making up for it, and yeah. I'm a battle master. I can like push people around, knock people prone. Absolutely, like, yeah, yeah. It's it's completely worth it. So I'm very confident to give it an S tier. I think that there's so many different. We we could probably and probably this is one of those examples of there's so many combinations here that we could probably devote a full episode just to the rogue fighter. The rogue fighter, yeah. And all the different builds that you can do with it. Now, after the fighter, we come to the monk. Um, this this is interesting because, although I don't think it's as powerful as the fighter, I think that there's some viable options here. Yeah. It should be noted, though, we can't sneak attack with our fists. But we can with short swords, which are a monk weapon. So we have to use a short sword. Yeah, that's And we fine. probably are getting sneak... It's a great way to up the amount of attacks we get to make. Yeah. Uh, two of which we can sneak attack on. We're probably going to hit. With one of them. With one of them. Yeah. Um, and also, I mean... Because you can only sneak attack once per turn. But it increases your odds, and then you get a pair of kicks. And if you stun somebody with stunning strike... That's advantage. Go to town. And, I mean... A rogue catching an arrow and throwing it back is kind of cool. Uh, the maneuverability... Seems handy here. Shadow yeah. Monk. What level do you have to be to get the Shadow Monk teleport? That's sixth. So that's a pretty deep commitment. But you get advantage after you do that. But if we are taking Shadow Monk, that's also giving us Pass Without Trace. Yes. And Darkness. Yes. And if we... I would take six levels of Monk, Shadow Monk, and then go the rest Rogue. So Monk six, Rogue six, 3d6 sneak attack. That's at least as good as many fighter builds. That's better than being... I think that's better than going 12 levels rogue. And that's better than going 12 levels monk. You still get to focus on dexterity with a wisdom secondary. So your ability scores aren't any different than if you were just a single class monk. I think that's straight up better than a level 12 monk. Yeah. The, the, the monk abilities at later levels, you get like... Oh, I don't have to sleep or, you know, yeah. there, there's some average monk abilities at later levels. The same way that the rogue kind of falls off. Both of these characters are front loaded. Both these classes are front loaded and fall off. Yeah. So if we spend that time investing in monk, do I think it's the most powerful option? No, I don't. Th I think the fighter, I think the druid's better. Um, but I don't think this is bad. I don't think it's bad either. I think that... I could very confidently be argued into giving it an A. I think I could too. I was thinking B when I started talking, but I've convinced myself that this is better than I thought. And even if we're not the Shadow Monk, there's the Kensei Monk, you know which what does bring the it Drunken down, Fighter. I think it really does require that five-level Monk commitment. Yeah, but... Or six levels. So did the Bard, and we gave that an A. That's true. We did. Um, and we said Fair's it fair. we said it wasn't an S because of that. Yeah. Um, now this this doesn't feel like it's an S tier at all. No. But do, is, does it drag it down to a B? Because their abilities gel so well, I don't think that there's any way that you can make a bad character with this combination. So I think that you're you're strong no matter what. What if I take four elements, monk? Oh. And pair it with. Actually, no, I, I, don't I like do that. I like almost all the rogues. Four elements, arcane trickster. I mean, it's you weird. might actually it, have something there. You might actually have something there. It's weird. I, I honestly just think that like going shadow monk with arcane trickster is really good. As we move on to the paladin, you can stack sneak attack with smite. You can. You can, and you can be a dexterity based paladin. You can. You still do do need to take the thirteen in strength. You don't mind having the 13 in Charisma. So you can do Rapier and Shield. So style points. Swashbuckler Paladin. Swashbuckler Paladin feels appropriate. Yes. Feels um, very elfy. 
Wait, Swashbuckler, Oath of Vengeance Paladin. Hello, my name is Nigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. Whoa, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He swore an oath of vengeance. Yes, he did. And he's a rogue. Yes, he did. <laughs> oh, man, that's all there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you Are you losing anything by taking Paladin? Um, so the thing that you're losing is that you have to really... you got to put the 13 in strength, which, fine. And you're going to be short on smites until you really start taking more paladin levels. But you get a fighting style out of it. You get bless out of it. You get some lay on hands. You could take five levels of paladin to get extra attack. Yeah. And that would give you second level spell slots, which is going to give you a fair number of smites. Oath of Vengeance. Oath of Vow of Enmity. Advantage on attack rolls. Okay, okay. You've got Misty Step and Hunter's Mark from the Oath of Vengeance. Hmm. I mean, there there seems like a lot of good options. I'm just like... This one, for some reason, makes me wary. There's something about it. There is something about it that makes me... Like, it feels... But... I, I like that you can play Inigo Montoya with it. Even though Inigo Montoya doesn't have like any other Paladin attributes to it. Just that alone, Oath of Vengeance Swashbuckler. Yeah. Um, I like, I like, and Swashbuckler cares about charisma. They do. Right. That's going to give you a nice yep. bonus to your, uh, to your initiative. Yep. Uh, you can kind of dance around your enemies. Yep. And now, okay, we're losing some sneak attack, but we're gaining smite. Yes. And a smite even though you have a limited numbers of smites is going to compensate because yeah. they're they they start at 2d8 so you're getting something there now when it's average 9 damage so 2d8s is almost as good as 3d6 I feel like the Oath of Vengeance definitely is the one you want to go with. I could so see I Oath of Conquest being cool, but that's more for like you can scare people, yeah, freeze them in their tracks, and then attack them. Redemption, Ancients. Mm. I mean, and if you wanted to have more spell slots to smite, you could be an Arcane Trickster, and that would give you more slots that you can use for that purpose. I think I, it's actually like pretty okay. I don't think it's the strongest build. No. It, it it feels... The the thing that brings it down when we compare to, say, the Barbarian or the Fighter or the Monk, it's kind of that question of where do the resources lie. Yeah. And, and I will say that the Monk and the Barbarian do run into this issue, and this is maybe more points for the Fighter, is the, the, the Rogue is a class as a whole. The rogue is the one class in D&D that actually innately does not have any abilities that come back on rests until you get into subclasses. So when you then, it just does everything at will. Or when we add the paladin with its limited smite spell slots, you get infinite sneak attacks as long as you make the conditions for it. Yeah. But you have a limited number of smites. So that trade-off isn't necessarily I'm willing to give this a B yeah I think there's potential in it I don't want to write it off no I we haven't given anything lower than a B yet no but you know what I think there's a reason for that and and I, and I think we'll, we'll talk about that more towards the end because it just really is good there, everything's good yeah yeah and speaking of good as we move on to the ranger Okay. The Ranger and Rogue, I feel like there's no losing here. No, this this is where you mix peanut butter and chocolate and you get delicious Reese's Pieces. This is the adding of chocolate to milk. Wine and cheese. The, it, it is wine and cheese. I, I do think, like, okay, obviously we're going to talk about Gloomstalker. The Gloomstalker, yay, you feel like a Rogue is a Ranger, like, obviously. Yes. But I think that as we go down the list of rangers, uh, I could be a rogue riding a dragon. Yep. 
I mean, I don't think you actually get to ride your dragon until no, very high level. So yeah. I could be a rogue with a pet baby dragon. Yeah. I could be a rogue with a pet wolf. Yes. I could be a rogue with a swarm of insects or something. Fae Wanderer Swashbuckler. Fae Wanderer Swashbuckler. I, uh, like, this is where, like the fighter... There's a lot of different options, and the power options are powerful. Because, yes... You can be a Gloomstalker. You can be like Veo, Gloomstalker, Arcane, Arcane Trickster. Trickster. It doesn't matter what le- where you take the levels. Hey, you know what else we have here? Pass Without Trace. Yep. Yep. We have Entangle. Pass we Without have a Trace. Fighting we, style. And, and this is the whole thing. Is Extra what, attack. The Ranger, we talked about how good the Druid was. We talked about how good the Fighter was. And what makes the Ranger S tier... Mm-hmm. is that it's grabbing some of our favorite things from both of those classes, and it really just works. S tier. I think so. And like j- just alone, once again, the reason why the Gloomstalker is so good in particular is because as a Gloomstalker, you're invisible when you're, when you're w- against creatures that have dark vision in darkness. So it's almost as good as that infiltration scenario because you're just naturally invisible all the time and you also have some other cool spells to add into it. So you can be a Gloomstalker with Pass Without Trace, with Sneak Attack, with Sharpshooter. Like, the things that you can layer on top of this, you just end up with that crazy character build that is just ludicrously good at everything it's doing. Yeah. At everything everything that it wants to do. You want to stack it all, like, again... Not to not to belabor the point of the food metaphor, but like we are going to the ice cream sundae buffet and being like, do you want more sprinkles? Do you want more chocolate chips? Do you want more caramel sauce? Do you want, not only do you want to have expertise in stealth, you have Pass Without Trace and you're naturally invisible in the darkness all the time. It's just, it, it, do you want sneak attack? Yes. Do you like sharpshooter? Yes. Do you like extra attack? Yes. Do you like Hunter's Mark? Yes. You get all of those things together in one place. It's, this might be the best combo. It is the best. Yeah. It is the best. I think it's the highest, like we've given a few S's. This is the 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 top tier S tier. Yes. And it's also up in your infiltration. With, yes, combined with the infiltration. You don't get to be assassin rat. But no. you're still amazing. But you're still going to kill whatever you touch. <laughs> As we move on to the Sorcerer, we're now into the final three spellcasters. Yeah. Sorcerer, uh, you know, we could be a Sorcerer Arcane Trickster, Charisma, yep. so, you know, we we're don't... We're not know. as, you know, it's the Bard, right? Yeah. So, here's a couple things to just argue for this. Yeah. Meta magic and Sorcery points to quicken some spells or subtle spell with the arcane trickster subtle spell with the arcane trickster does feel good and this is where i want to point out the one arcane trickster feature that kind of is sitting there being like hey use me at ninth level arcane tricksters get a feature where when they cast a spell and they're hidden from the target they're casting the spell on the target is disadvantage. This is a hard thing to activate for a lot of characters because they don't have subtle spell. So, Arcane Trickster Rogue, nine levels of Arcane Trickster, a couple levels of Sorcerer to give a Sorcery Point subtle spell, and now we are hiding in the darkness, we see all the enemies over there, and hey, the Gloomstalker Ranger Rogue was shooting them, but we just cast Hypnotic Pattern on them, and they all had disadvantage on their saving throw. And then we murder them one by one. Yep. Meta magic on an arcane trickster feels cool. Yep. Meta magic on any other rogue feels less important. Yes, because I, I think the key here is that you're you're grabbing that disadvantage on spells. You're getting you're getting five levels of a spell caster so that you're actually getting a couple interesting things. And and once again, you end up with this weird sort of like Do I do this or do I do this? Because you could get Hypnotic Pattern as an Arcane Trickster that was single-classed. And I feel like... But it wouldn't be a subtle spell. Unlike the Bard, 
who actually gave us some combat options and sneaky options. The Sorcerer has less of that. They're more straight up caster. And Bards are a full caster, but Bards have more, more diversity in their subclass options. There is the Sorcerer feature, though, that lets you spend a Sorcery point to reroll a skill check. I mean, that that is useful. Yeah. I, I'm not saying that this is garbage. Aberrant Minds also can automatically subtle spell stuff. Flip side, you could just grab the meta magic feat to get two, yeah. two castings of subtle spell. I don't think this is trash, but I think that it's a very specific build. There's, yeah. a, there's a build here that's good. Yes. And for that reason, I think this is a C. Okay. In support of your ranking, you also have to be like a 14th level character yeah. to make this happen, yeah. right? So this is a very high level thing. And I think if you're not there it it really does kind of ew but you know we did talk about the bard take having to invest six levels of bard i'm a little more optimistic than you i think it's a b i, I think know. you can build it i think you could i do think it. you can build one okay but when we move on to the warlock again i don't think there's an extravagant number of builds here it doesn't jump off the page to me as like oh we can combine anything but is there an argument here for an assassin hexblade? So you could go full charisma focus, pact of the blade, use a rapier, so you're sneak attacking. You could get the different packs that let you smite with your warlock splots. You could also go with the darkness devil sight combo. You could also be a swashbuckler hexblade. Mask of many faces for constantly changing your face. And the swashbuckler wants charisma as a stat. Yeah. The assassin is going to let you kill things. Hexblade doesn't mind having a dexterity investment. No. They don't mind wearing medium armor on a shield. Th this, this, though, is the problem with warlocks. I think that as we're talking about the warlock, we can make a case for the Hexblade. But I don't think I can make much of a case for the other options. You can't sneak attack with Eldritch Blast. No. And, yeah, we get some invocations, but it doesn't feel worth... Taken. On the flip side, the spell slots come back on a short rest. So it does mean that you've got more ready access to them. The inv There could be some interesting lower level invocations that give you some more skill proficiencies, that give you some mileage here that you can work with. I mean, I would love to be... Now, okay, if I was an, just an arcane trickster and I took the Eldritch Invocation uh, feat to gain Devil's Sight then I'm kind of part of the Yeah, you're kind of already there. Again, you really got to decide what is it that you want, and, and there's nothing that strikes me as like, wow, I have to have this. I think it's a C again. Like, again, I, I think we're above being absolute trash. I, don't, yeah. I think that there's, like, you could be like, no, you could build X, Y, or Z. There is a diamond in the rough here, but it's going to be kind of rough, and you're going to have to decide. A diamond in the rough? Like Aladdin? Genie! Pat. Like the genie warlock rogue? I don't actually know if that blends well. No, but, but, but it kind of makes sense. Aladdin... Is the genie warlock rogue. A little bit of column... Have a little bit of column A from all from column B. I'm in the mood to help you, dude. You said diamond You've in the You've never seen a multi-class like me. Okay. I, I don't think it's a great multi-class, but it's definitely... A, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Aladdin. But I, this still gets a C. Yeah. Sorry, Robin Williams. Wizard. Okay, Arcane Trickster, Wizard. They both like intelligence. Yep. I mean, you're kind of going to do the same thing that we were going to do with Sorcerer, except we don't have Subtle Spell. But we get to use Intelligence as our casting stat. So it, it blends together in, in that respect. Is there a... Um... There's probably some cool stuff that you can do with an Illusionist. What about a Blade Singer? Okay, so Blade Singer wants to be, be basically using the weapon types associated with this. And Blade Singer does get us to extra attack. And the other interesting thing is that Blade Singer has that very unique extra attack that lets them cantrip plus extra attack plus sneak attack on top of it. Uh, Blade Singer Arcane Trickster, do we like. Blade Singer Arcane Trickster could. Can we sneak attack? So this could be the character that really gets a lot out of Shadowblade. Mm. 
Can we sneak attack with a shadow blade? Yeah. Yeah, because it's a finesse weapon. So, uh, and you know, incidentally, it's worth mentioning. The sorcerer could be could be using shadow blade as well. Again, it's it's a very high level character, and and once again, this is where you have to measure it, right? Because yes, you could be a blade singer. So you take six levels of blade singer, and now you got six levels of rogue under your belt. So you've got a three d six sneak attack. You've got cunning action. You've got blade song. You've got all these cool things. But the highest level spell that you could toss down is a third level spell. Whereas you could have been a blade singer who is now using animate objects or tensor's yeah. transformation or is really dropping those really powerful wizard spells and so you have to come like again this is one of those cases where the opportunity cost really is a high price to pay but we're not getting those levels you're, you're with this build you're not getting the i win buttons no um no i don't i don't actually like okay we talked about the 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 blade singer possibly is it is it enough to give it a c or is this our d no it's not a d i don't think it's a d tier by any stretch i think that there is something here to do um i think the blade singer arcane trickster makes it a c no i think the blade singer arcane trickster is an argument for like an a eh. i think you're vastly underestimating how good this could be okay yeah well what i mean is that one build raises it from a, yes. from a, like raises the whole thing to a C. No, I think that one build raises it from a C to a potential A. You want to give the wizard an A? I don't want to give the wizard an A. I want to give the wizard... I personally, reflecting back on the Sorcerer, the Warlock, and the Wizard, I really think that... I, I think the wizard's the weakest of the three. I actually have my doubts now. Okay. I honestly think that all three of these spellcasters are potentially quite strong and i would be happy to give them a b for all three i'm giving all three c's okay i think in the comments you should show kelly all the builds and colby blade singer well, colby can't... of course is going to make the s tier <laughs> build but listen in the grand scheme of all the options if i am a rogue and i'm multi-classic I'm multi-classing ranger, I'm multi-classing fighter, I'm multi-classing barbarian for the gladiator build, I'm multi-classing bard for the party face build, and I'm multi-classing druid for assassin rat. Maybe I'm multi-classing, actually, that's my list of characters I would play. After that, everything starts to fall off. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing for me is that with the sorcerer, the warlock, and the wizard, I really think that I gravitate towards other combinations with all three of those classes before I would consider doing the rogue. Yeah. I just think that be, even though there, there's things that are way stronger with all three of those, I think that the rogue, it's, it, it's a totally playable and interesting character. And I think that it's stronger than, I think all three of those are potentially stronger than a straight up rogue of the equivalent level. It's just that all three of them are probably straight up weaker than an equivalent wizard because that's the imbalance like the rogue is actually in fifth edition DD, it's not a very strong class it actually is a pretty weak class and so rogue wizard is better than straight up rogue but worse than straight up wizard and that's the issue i mean in your opinion in my opinion but what does our what what does the community think of these options? So diving into our community rankings, the fighter and the ranger, as predicted, really came out on top. Yeah, so seventy percent of our audience gave it to the fighter. That as one of the top three choices. That means that it got more it got picked as one of the top three more than more than anybody else and easily is the number one choice. So Fighter and Ranger were the only two that received more votes from the community than staying a single class rogue. Interesting. Yeah. I'm a little interested by this as well because guess what the lowest ranked was by the community? Cleric and Druid. The Druid was the lowest rated. Interesting. Yeah. I, I feel like people are underestimating the dip. Now, I know that there's not a lot that you gain, but there's there's some there's there's quite a bit that are that helps it's, your infiltration. It's worth a it's worth a peek. 
The Bard and the Wizard, they'll had notable high percentages. And I think the Arcane Trickster Wizard, the Ranger Rogue, the, the, the Wizard Rogue is a very classic archetype. And I think that it, it is very well loved. And the Bard Rogue is a very natural fit as well. All right, maybe maybe I'm wrong about the Wizard. I'm willing to admit that I haven't, I, I just didn't see it. Yeah. But I this is very interesting because I personally believe that Rogues fall off quite a bit as they move into higher levels. I agree. And that multi-classing actually can give you a lot more with your rogue. I think that the rogue gains so much from multi-classing and y you really do have a strong case for multi-classing as a rogue once you reach about level five. It's a very front-loaded class and it combines very well with a lot of others. So I do think that I think that you can make almost any class pair with, with the rogue, and it's worth potentially investigating all the different build options that are out there because it's it's got a lot of potential. At the same time, I think it also speaks to the fact that the core rogue class does need some love. I think what's interesting is that this is one of the first times in this series that I expected to see this graph very level. I thought that a lot of the classes, like I thought Fighter and Ranger would be the highest, but I yeah. thought it would be a lot more in the middle on, like a lot of people would be picking clerics, druids, bards, uh, barbarians even. Well, I think that one of the things that you have to appreciate is that there is strong thematic resonance and a lot of history behind the rogue fighter, the rogue ranger, the rogue bard, and the rogue wizard those four really feel like classic archetypes that those concepts have existed for a very long time and so it's not surprising to see them be very well loved but i think that there's a lot of hidden potential which is what the rogue's all about oh yeah so i i don't disagree with the rankings but i i'm just interested because i think that we saw a lot of potential that was overlooked maybe by the community. Obviously, if you're picking your top three, even ones that are pretty good are going to get low rankings because you're picking your top three and the top three feel more obvious here. Yeah. But what I think is the big statement is I'm surprised at how highly ranked staying a single class rogue is because I actually don't think staying a single class rogue is your best option even if you want to play a rogue. I think multi-classing helps the rogue out, and I thought that that would be way lower with more of these falling above it. So that's what I'm more interested in, is the people who think that staying a single-class rogue is better than taking a dip into cleric, druid, barbarian, or even like wizard, yeah. or any of those other options. I, I'm interested to hear about that. So tell us about your thoughts on the multi-class potential of the rogue in the comments below. The videos that we create on our channel are made possible thanks to the incredible generosity of our Patreon supporters. If you enjoy the work that we do here on YouTube, please consider becoming a patron of the channel by following the links down below. And if you want to see a single class rogue and a rogue ranger in play, you can check out our live play in the worlds of Draconine, which is Tuesday evenings on Twitch. You can find all the previous episodes right up over here. Check out all of our tier ranking content right up over here. Please subscribe to our channel, like this video, and ring that bell so that you never miss an episode. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time in, in the, the dungeon. dungeon.